Well, Srebrenica uh, means to me a lot. Uh, it has defined my life. Uh, uh, genocide which took place when I was uh, 20 years old definitely had huge impact on my life. Uh, not only uh, my family, but my neighbors, my uh, schoolmates, uh, kind of everything uh, that happened in July of 1995 uh, determined the rest of my life. If I was not there in 1995, my life uh, today would probably look very much different than it is. What happened in, uh, in Srebrenica was a direct result of, um, of the West's failure to, to respond to these signals that were, that were clear and every step of the way. First of all, the people who were there, and now I mean the Bosnian people, for them it's still a big trauma, but next to them, the Dutch people who failed to protect uh, really feel that responsibility and so they really feel connected uh, to what happened in Srebrenica and what is still happening to the people there. Frankly, 20 years later, we're uh, faced with a similar situation uh, with the refugee crisis here and I keep thinking back to, to Srebrenica that have we not learned anything about how uh, how inaction is in itself action. It gives a signal. And we're seeing now as, as the uh, European Union, one of the, one of the institutions that, that demonstrated collective failure 20 years ago, when uh, it had been announced by the, the then um, EU president, the foreign minister of Luxembourg, that the hour of Europe has dawned. And of course, it hadn't dawned, and I don't think it's dawned yet, as we see the EU dithering while, um, while hundreds of thousands of refugees are, 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 are pouring across European frontiers, and in the country where we are presently, Hungary, um, the, the reaction has been, has been the worst imaginable, and drawing no lessons from, from Hungary's terrible history, or from Srebrenica? Well, I think the world, and uh, especially those uh, who are decision makers and policy makers, have to learn a lot on what happened in Srebrenica. And I think uh, through the initiative uh, of the UN and responsibility to protect, uh, uh, we can see that uh, much has been learned. I'm hoping that uh, those lessons learned in Srebrenica will be implemented in the future, uh, so uh, genocide does not happen to any other part of the world. When it comes to f facts and, and uh, what was done and what was not done and, and, and what was uh, the basis of the failure to protect, uh, yes, I think that pretty much everything has, has come on the table. Uh, when it comes to coping with what happened before and under our eyes and hands, uh, it's, it's still a hard thing. It's still a political discussion, but most of all, it's, it's a big thing uh, in the eyes of people who were, who were there. And, and now I mean the Dutch soldiers, the Dutch military, the, the troops. Uh, for them, it's just as big a trauma, I think, uh, as for many other people, since uh, they were there and they were sent with a task they couldn't fulfill. And I kept looking around and, and asking myself, where were you all 20 years ago? And why is it that we're so good at memorials and so bad at, at preventing them when these things always take preparation? And it always starts with words, words that, that, that uh, demonize uh, one group. Well, justice is a very complex issue, and I think uh, each person has the right to, uh, to, 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 to answer this question for, for themselves. Uh, did they receive justice? Uh, it's, it's a far-reaching. Uh, I think there has been a, an effort on the side of international community by uh, formation of ICTY uh, and bringing to justice those who are the most responsible for the 
policies of ethnic cleansing and genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But there are hundreds and thousands of those who actively participated in the execution of these policies who will never be brought to, to trial or uh, the justice will not be uh, served simply because uh, Bosnia does not have that kind of resources to uh, prosecute all of these who have committed uh, uh, war crimes. This word protection um, has never been really filled in with proper mandates, proper uh, uh, rules of engagement, proper uh, capacities and proper authority to indeed protect once the, uh, uh, the violence uh, started to break out. Unfortunately we live in a very turbulent time. Uh, conflicts are raging around, around the world and uh, uh, that those who are willing to uh, participate or the, some, some, ways, some, some instances uh, make the life of, of the civilians who are caught in these conflicts easier. Uh, their resources are stretched out and uh, I think they're efforts are diminishing, which is very, very sad, uh, having in mind that, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can see that, uh, you know, a lot of crises around the world are emerging, and similar crises as we had in the, in the former Yugoslavia. So I'm really hoping that they would not escalate to the point where, where someone is going to be uh, killed just because of their ethnic or religious uh, affiliation. And quite frankly, I'm very, I'm very happy that we're, that we're remembering Srebrenica today, but the, oh, the only fitting memorial to Srebrenica would be a demonstration that, that those 8,000 Muslim men and boys were not killed in vain, that the world learned something from that. The, the speed with which hate can spread uh, in, a, in the heart of so-called civilized Europe. That is the only fitting memorial to Srebrenica. Let us demonstrate that we've learned something.